Omega Omega service is a rite of passage that Delta Sigma Theta sorority gives its deceased sorors. It is altogether fitting that we, sorors of Delta Sigma Theta, pause here in a moment of loving tribute to our dear sister. Delta sorors everywhere who have received the sad message are deeply touched and grieved. Our deepest sympathy is extended to the family of Soror Lorraine Williams. We are born for a higher destiny than that of Earth. There is a realm where the rainbow never fades, where the stars will be spread before us like islands that slumber on the ocean, and where the beings that pass before us like shadows will stay in our presence. She is not dead who lives in part she leaves behind. And those who she has blessed, she lives in life again. And she'll live through the years eternal life and growth, each day more beautiful as time declares her good, but gets the rest and proves her immortality. Wars, we gather as a final act of real sisterhood to soar Lorraine Williams, who departed this life on March 12, 2024. Now that her mortal life has ended, we remember with joy the good she leaves behind. Soror Lorraine Williams was initiated into Delta Sigma Theta Sorority through the Lexington Alumni Virginia Chapter, May 18, 1968. After her initiation, she later became one of the first active members of the Charlottesville Alumni Chapter after her charter in June 1969. Sora Wiggs remained an active member of that chapter for many years, where she offered words of wisdom to her soul. Even during her time of illness, she always epitomized the virtue and wisdom of the Proverbs 31 book. Proverbs 31, 10 through 12, speaks of the values of a virtuous wife. The question is, who can find a virtuous wife? One whose world is far above prudence. One who has the heart of her husband because he safely trusts her. To honor him with goodness and not evil all the days of her life. This describes Sor Lord Lorraine Williams. From the time I was a child to becoming her Sor Lord, I truly witnessed these Christian values in Sor Lord Lorraine Williams. With grace, she wore the garments of honor and godly strength. The scripture tells us that this woman opens her mouth with wisdom, and her tongue in the law of kindness. This was sore reign over the years in the community, in her home, and in our school. Her voice and actions were a testament of others to us. During turbulent times, she rejoiced with others when obstacles were no longer hindrances. In verse 30, we are reminded that Charm is deceitful and beauty is passive. But a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Today we offer praise to God for having known Sora Williams, to have walked and talked with her, loved her, and know that she loved us. In Colossians 1.10, we find the Apostle Paul Paul, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Sora Lorraine Lorraine did just that, walking worthy before her, using her God-given talents to help others. As the songwriter wrote, may the works I've done speak for me, and may the life I live speak for me. Yes, Sora Lorraine, family and friends. Sora Lorraine's works and her life 
have left a legacy for all of us. So on today, we rest on the words of Jesus in John 14, 27. It says, peace, I leave with you. My peace, I give you. Not as the world gives, do I give to you. Let not your heart be, neither let it be afraid. Sora Array Williams remained true to her sacred word of honor. She loved Delta and its ideals and faithfully attempted to realize them in her daily life. She sought to be compassionate, loving as a sister, tender hearted, and humble minded. She lived fully and laughed often. She appreciated Earth's beauty. She looked for the best in others and gave the best she had. Her life was an inspiration, and her memory will be a benediction. She added to the sum of human joy. And if everyone to whom she offered loving service were to bring a blossom to her grave, she would sleep tonight beneath the wilderness of flowers. The record of a general's life runs like a vine around the memory of the soul, and every sweet, unselfish act is now a perfumed flower. Speech cannot retain our love. There was there is no gentle soul. Now who make this bed, make bed with awe. In it wait till judgment break, excellent and fair. Be it mattress straight, be it pillow brown. Let no sunrise, yellow noise, interrupt this ground. There is no doubt, the stars go down. To rise the place of other shores, and bright in heaven's dual crown, they shine forevermore. And ever near us, though unseen, but give the immortal spirit tread, for all the boundless universe is light, there is no death. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more seen. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death, no sorrow, no crying, neither shall there be any pain, for the former things have passed away. He that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Right, these words are true and faith. And he said unto me, It is not, I am Alpha. And Omega, the beginning and the end, I will give freely unto her who is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life. So she who overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be her God, and she shall be my child. In memoriam, do not stand in my grave and weep. I am not there. I do not sleep. As long as Delta's numbers continue to multiply, I shall live on. I will not die. For Delta women who care and give perpetuate my name, and so I live. I bid you be brave, my sisters, daring and strong. Hold high the torch and carry on. Do not sit at my grave and cry. I am not there. My spirit in Delta will not die.
as we extinguish the candles representing the fundamental principles and the torch of wisdom, we are also reminded of the nine candles in our beloved Sigma, which represent the nine cardinal virtues of Delta Sigma Theta. These lights are extinguished, symbolizing the passage of our soul into Omega Omega chapter. Let us relight their meaning in our own hearts. This, in the end, is the most fitting tribute to our beloved Soror, Soror Lorraine Williams. Father, into <coughs> thy gracious keeping, leave me now, our Soror sleeping. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
Ave 
Yeah, I said, do we lose? Do we lose? Take home. Ave Maria. to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. <clears throat> I light this candle in tribute and honor to our deceased sister, Lane Lorraine. There is no death, her light shines forevermore. Her voice and memories of all who live within our hearts. This white rose symbolizes unity and friendship. Friendship is the chain of links which binds us together. Service is that which Link Lorraine gave lovingly to her family, to her endeavors, and to men. Remembrances. In the glow of dark, of dusk, soft papers, we assemble here today to remember a link once with us, who in death has passed away. Friendship's chain, a precious legacy, forged in strength, will not be broken. Song and rose, the cherished ritual, candles, pledge, and words unspoken. Founders, leaders, sisters, many, work with us to do some good, as in joy she offered service through our very sisterhood. Now, in that eternal kingdom where through faith we hope to dwell, she awaits our coming to her at the last toll of the bell. Day ends, life ends. Sweet remembrance. Keep her with us, though unseen, closer in the eternal lengthen now that we have ever been. Golden links are fragrant roses 
candlelight in some say, but to us, she's forever present in the calm peace of this day. I break the chain, <coughs> symbolic of the missing link in our chain of friendship. <coughs> Almighty and most merciful Father, we pray that our blessings <coughs> on the soul of our departed sister Lady Lorraine. May she rest in peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A resolution for Lorraine A. Lee. Whereas in the providence of God, he has brought to a close the life of Lorraine A. Williams. The officers and members of the Charlottesville chapter of the Leeds Incorporated <coughs> expressed our deepest sympathy to the family of our dear friend and Leeds sister, Lorraine Payne Reeves. We commend you to him who knows best and is eternally good, and you have our sincere prayers. Whereas Lorraine Payne Reeves, a charter member, of the Charlottesville chapter of the Leeds Incorporated, dedicated many years of service in the areas of the arts, national trends and services, international trends and services, services to youth and health and human services, contributing significantly to the local Charlottesville community and the surrounding area. Whereas the rain came with and educated at Jackson P. Early High School for many years, teaching in the business education department and as the chair of the department, was dedicated to the civil rights movement and an integral figure in the school integration of the Charlottesville school system. And to the cause to provide affordable housing for those in need to dog with housing, which was founded by her. <coughs> Lastly, she was dedicated to her family and her family. Being resolved by the members of the Charlottesville chapter of the Links Incorporated, that we commend the exemplary life of Lorraine Payne Williams. Blessed are they who have the gift of making dreams, for it is one of God's best gifts. It involves many things, but above all, the power of going out oneself and appreciating whatever is known and loved in another. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we hold the family close because we all share a common bond that will connect us for the rest of our lives. Although if she is gone in body, she will remain in our hearts and memories forever. Furthermore, a copy of this resolution will be given to the family, and a copy will be kept in the Oxford chapter of the Incorporated Archives. Public submitted on Saturday, March 23rd, 2020, on behalf of the Charlottesville chapter of the Incorporated Archives. Gabby Albert, chapter. Let us always remember our late sister Lorraine, who has gone before. Whose soul is in the hands of God, 
for your torment shall never touch her. In the eyes of sages, she appears in glory. In the memory of Lynch, she lingers forever. She is the cure one to your now at peace. She is with the fatigue who are now at rest. She is with the distressed who are now at peace. She is with the laborers who are now at bliss. In the light she fought her own mortality. In death she yields to immortality. In death, she shines her spirit firm. Like gold in a furnace, she has tried and Like gold in a wheat field, she reached the harvest. Yes, let us always remember our link system has gone before. Who walks now in fragrant fields of white roses? Her soul is now in the hands of God, where anguish shall never touch her, and where love shall never embrace her. Where service shall be rewarded and where friendship shall never end. Let us pray. Almighty and all wise Father, we thank you for the life of our dear sister. As we read the departure, help us to understand that death is not the end, but rather the beginning, stage of a glorious new life. We thank you for the wonderful hours we spend together in friendship and for the many sacred opportunities we share in dutiful service. As we commend our loving sister to your work, we pray that we will find peace in our hearts and that our coming days will be filled with strength, love, and courage. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed it be. Thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. In earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Ya Allah Ya
Shall we stand to our feet, please? This is another day that God has made in order. Rejoice and be glad in it. Shall we bow in a word of prayer? For Heavenly Father, eternal God, we're once again so thankful and so grateful. We realize, Lord, that at this present time, things may not be as we would want them to be. We are so thankful and we are so grateful. Things are as well as they are. We come now with a special request that you allow your spirit to come and in this place. It is in your marvelous son Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Listen, while you're standing, it will help me if you do me a favor. We are here to celebrate 98 years. Let's try that again. Put a smile on your face. <laughs> this is a day of celebration. God bless you. You may be, you may be seated. Now, if I catch you, if I catch you with a frown on your face, I'm going to come back and say it all over again. <laughs> We are, we are blessed today to have in our presence the Honorable Mayor of this great city. He's going to come down and extend the word and welcome to you uh, at this time. God bless you. Thank you so much. It is indeed my honor to be here to honor the and celebrate the life of dear sister Lorraine Williams. It is an honor um, to be here. And I was honored when the family asked me to bring the welcome, so thank you so much. Over the past several decades, the Williams have welcomed many to their home for, for advice. I felt like I was a true Charlottesvilleans when I was invited to their home and guided back to the little dinette, offered a glass of Miss Renee's sweet tea oh, to receive some advice from Lorraine and Eugene. 
I could not wait to get home and tell Claudette of, about it. I said, I finally feel like I've made it. You know, I went there just as many others to see guidance not only on leadership, but learning about the history in Charlottesville. I'm originally from Richmond. One of those came here for grad school and, and couldn't leave. I got advice on, on merits, and I recall proudly um, at the time telling Eugene and Lorraine that Claudette and I had been married 25 years. And Eugene said, well, we got 70 and sit down, let me give you some advice. <laughs> They give and give and give. It reminds me of an old parable that I once heard that reminds me um, that it fits you all to a, a T. And if you can imagine, you're walking and you're going into um, wood, a set of you know, in, in woods, and you come upon this big hole in the ground, and you see it's filled with money. And you look around, and you grab a handful of all you could. You go back home. You stuff it under the bed. You go back the next day. The hole is still there, filled again with money. You grab all you can. You go home, you stuff it in the closet. You go there the next day. Money again. You grab the pudding dresser. You do this for weeks and weeks. My friends, I ask you, would you share the source? Not, not the source of, of the money, but the source of where the money came from. And that's what the Williams do. They share, they give and give and give. And they've been doing it for years. They have the source of love, of knowledge, of history of themselves. Their source has made it possible for leaders like myself and Leah possible and countless others. Because oftentimes when I go there, they, um, others are there. I kind of have to wait in line sometimes. <laughs> So as mayor of the great city of Charlottesville, I welcome you both near and far for this occasion to celebrate the life of Lorraine. Give the daughters and Eugene and their family members a big hug. Show them how we do it here in Charlottesville. And let's continue to visit Eugene when the family goes back home. Continue with those visits. I still want to go there and have to wait in line sometimes to, to um, visit them. I'm sure that, that Eugene will welcome you on his front porch, still as that source, but also with the side of Miss Lorraine's sweet tea. Thank you and welcome. I want to thank the mayor of this great city. He has to party as a busy, busy schedule. So and we want to thank you. There is a spiritual shall table when she's present. She's going to come and share with us when she has finished. Prepare our hearts to hear the reading of the 23rd song that's going to be offered by Denise. Yeah. 
these two individuals that share the platform with me and their shoulders and head began to move back and forth. I knew then that church had came up in here. <laughs> and, uh, so thankful and grateful for the musical selection and the reading of our scripture. One of the individuals will come down, there is a resolution that has been prepared is a formal representative of the House of Delegates. He's going to come down and share with us the resolution. Let's give him some love by giving him a hand clap. Good morning. 
feel a lot. I feel the church in here. Thank you very much. Um, uh, I, I'm David Toscano, uh, and I'm honored and humbled to be here today. Uh, I guess I'm somewhat of a messenger on this uh, this resolution. There are many of my former colleagues on the city council are here in the audience today who could have done this uh, job as well, as uh, well as uh, my sponsor in the House, Representative McClellan, and a sponsor in the Senate, Senator P. Deeds, who's in the back of the room there. So I'm just honored to give this. And I, uh, I hope you understand this was approved by a major by uh, a unanimous vote of both the House and the Senate when we introduced it. There's no contest here to celebrate the life of Maureen Williams. So please, as I read, soak up the words because they mean a lot to us as a community. Whereas Maureen Payne Williams of Charlottesville, a retired teacher, a community leader, and an advocate for civil rights, was honored on November 5, 2014 as the Paul Harris Fellow by the Blue Ridge Mountain uh, Rotary Club for her leadership and support, especially in her work to remove racial barriers and provide affordable housing. And whereas a native of Ivy, Lorraine Payne, attended Terry Elementary School and Jefferson High School in Charlottesville, both of which were segregated, she received a bachelor's degree from Hampton Institute, now Hampton University, and later earned a master's degree from the University of Virginia. And whereas Lorraine Payne married Eugene Williams uh, and became a teacher, she taught hundreds of children from Charlottesville and Albemarle County during her long and distinguished career. And whereas in the mid-1950s, Lorraine Williams and her husband, who was president of a branch of the NAACP, formed a committee of parents to integrate the Charlottesville Public Schools. The group won a lawsuit that ordered the public schools to desegregate, but the school system closed rather than comply with the court order. Digression. I've known Lorraine and uh, Eugene for some 40 years, but our family goes back even farther to a time when my uh, father-in-law, George Tremonton, was in the administration of the Charlottesville School Division. And with Lorraine and Eugene, they sat together in court to let students in one by one. We go that long ways. We're not forbidden that. But let me continue. When the Charlottesville Public Schools reopened in 1962, the Williams' two daughters, Carol and uh, Cheryl, aged 10 and 8 respectively, were enrolled at and escorted by police to the formerly all-white schools. Years later, their daughter Cheryl was named Homecoming Queen at Lane High School, which at the time was less than 10% African American. And whereas recognizing the community involvement can improve people's lives, Lorraine Williams joined and served as the president of the Charlottesville Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority, a group promotes human welfare through established community programs. And whereas Lorraine Williams formed Dogwood Housing with her husband and other family members to maintain and improve the inventory of affordable housing in Charlottesville, the company brought 62 housing units and renovated them, <laughs> creating an attractive and affordable housing in the city. And whereas for many years, Lorraine and her husband took a personal interest in their tenants, encouraging them to work hard so they could advance and become homeowners. They owned the successful property management company until it was sold in 2007. And whereas Lorraine Williams has devoted much of her life to erasing segregation and helping the less fortunate in Charlottesville. And whereas Lorraine Williams interested in serving others was a tour of the Charlottesville chapter of the Lynx Incorporated, a volunteer service organization of extraordinary women committed to enriching, sustaining, and ensuring the culture and economic survival of African Americans. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the House of Delegates, the Senate concurring, that the General Assembly hereby commend Lorraine H. Williams of Charlottesville. I read in the obituary the use of the word 
cherished. <laughs> in describing Lorraine Williams. And certainly she was cherished. She was cherished by Eugene, by her family. She is cherished by this community. And in our hearts and minds, she will be forever cherished. Thank you very much for letting me present that resolution. If there are other local and state representatives that are here today, I would request that you stand so that we can recognize you. Any past or current state, local, federal representatives, don't be ashamed. presence here on, on this day of celebration. The resolution was wonderful representation of who we come today to celebrate. Uh, your convenient time, you leave this place, we request that you open that resolution up again and read through it again. It simply shows the individual that come today to there is another musical selection that's going to come now. She has completed, and the granddaughter is going to come and share what is listed as Lorraine's prayer. <laughs> I'm happy. 
coming up on the rough side of the mountain. We are striving to get to the top. We could not have made it thus far without your grace and kindness. We are your children's struggle. When we have done all you have assigned our hearts and hands to do, receive us into your kingdom, when we will praise your name forever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> So let us start to clap. I don't know why I can stop this. Paper. <laughs> and the granddaughter from going all the way back to the grandfather's prayer. We thank God for the musical selection as I, as I was set and was stood and listened to that musical selection. It reminded me of this. Southern Baptist preacher. When I heard that, I was I was ready to take my text. <laughs> Ain't even a Sunday morning. Right. So we thank her for that selection, and once again thank the, thank the granddaughter. I, I need you to do me another favor. You're losing that that smile on this day of celebration. So put that smile back on your face. Thank you yeah. so much. Amen. Let's stand on our feet now as we, as we welcome tribute to tribute. It's been brought to us by a representative of Congresswoman of the United States, Representative Jennifer Cullen. Let's give her a hand clap as she comes. Um, it is an honor for me to be here today. Um, I was I was worried. Uh, you probably saw in the news there was a lot going on yesterday, and I was worried that I might be stuck in Washington. And I said a little prayer and said, "I cannot miss the celebration of life of Ray Williams." And uh, fortunately, I was able to leave Washington uh, yesterday afternoon and know that the government would stay open. <laughs> uh, we are a minute, <laughs> but it stayed open. And but I could not miss today. Um, I first met Lorraine and Eugene when we passed the resolution in 2015. It was about a year after my father passed away, and he and Lorraine were about five months apart in age. Um, I was very pregnant at the time. Um, and since then, they have shown me a kindness that has filled my heart every time I come to Charlottesville. Little things like when the Senate Finance Committee came to Charlottesville for our annual meeting, I opened the door to my hotel to find a beautiful floral arrangement. Welcome to be to Charlottesville. Um, to when I ran for governor, um, they supported me 
and would come to events when I was in Charlottesville and I'd get advice. But part of why they are so special to me is because, like my father, they've seen the best of government, they've seen the worst of government. They've seen best of humanity, and they've seen the worst of humanity. And in the face of hatred, the worst of mankind. I have even fought to bring out the best. I think about what they've seen in their lifetime. I think about Lorraine Bourne in 1925, Calvin Coolidge was president. It was the Roaring Twenties. Much of the country was dancing and celebrating and always having a good time, but not all of America. We were in the midst of a backlash to the progress that Black people had made during Reconstruction, social, political, economic progress. We were in the midst of a backlash that began when Reconstruction and made sure, put Jim Crow in place to keep us in our place. Then to see the worst economic crisis in America at that time, to live through a world war, and to keep striving in the midst of all of that to make the ideals upon which this country was founded true for everybody to fight for a good education that began here, but recognizing that segregation was wrong, to fight against the governor of this commonwealth, and fight against massive resistance, which our government, where the birthplace of American democracy and the birthplace of American slavery rather than integrating schools, close them here and in four other localities. But Rain and Eugene said, no, we are going to make sure all of our children get a good education because she herself learned here and as a teacher the importance of a good education as the foundation for economic opportunity, for a thriving, healthy community, a thriving, healthy democracy. She then saw the backlash to the progress of the civil rights movement. After the success of in schools, the Civil Rights Act, the Voting Rights Act, she saw the backlash of a set of strategy that elected Richard Nixon president on a platform meant to divide. She lived to see the comeback in the election of Barack Obama as our first black president, and she saw another backlash. A backlash that led to lies about birtherism, stolen elections. And then she lived through progress again, as she witnessed the murder of George Floyd and probably felt the same pain and anger that she felt with the murder of Emmett Till. She saw more progress, as in two years, we at the state level and nationally did more to address the legacy of Jim Crow and slavery than in the rest of her life combined. And then she saw a backlash again. But she got to vote for and see the first black woman vice president. And she got to see the first black woman elected to Congress from Virginia. And throughout it all, she touched so many lives, whether through her housing work, her teaching work, her community work, or just a smile, a glass of ice cream, and a bouquet of flowers. I am not sad today because I know that my father welcomed her into heaven and said, I'm going to show you around. Because <laughs> that's the type of man that he was. Don't get jealous, though. His first love is still my mother. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and I'm here not only to celebrate her life, but to make an ask of everyone here. First to her daughters and to Eugene. She is always with you. She will always be with you. In the quiet moments, she'll come and she'll touch you and say, it's okay. I'm free. I'm with our to the community tell her story the life she lived and the things she saw not all of it is taught in school it is up to us to teach that legacy and keep it alive it is up to us to realize that just as she fought the same fights as her parents and grandparents we're still fighting the same fights that she fought but we fight those fights from a position of more strength because of the work that she did. And we fight those fights so that our children and our grandchildren don't have to. But if they do have to fight them, they fight from a position of more strength than we did. Remember where she started. Remember how far she came. And remember what John Lewis said in his final Democracy is not a state. It is an action that requires every generation to do its part to build a beloved community. Lorraine did her part. And I have no doubt that when she shows up in heaven, God will say, well done, my good and faithful servant. It's up to us now to pick up the baton and carry on her work. And we will do that because we love her. And I'm grateful for the life she lived. Thank you all very much. One, two. Thank Representative Jennifer Cullen. She has made my task easy. So thankful and grateful for that. Before I get into what is referred to as the eulogy, let me make sure that you have, family has requested a Southern Baptist preacher to bring forth the eulogy. I have tried on several occasions to get that lead, but it won't leave. <laughs> so I'm going to present myself as only I know how to present myself. That is a Southern Baptist preacher. Inside of your bulletin, if you have not noticed it, there is a resolution that is coming from the Ebenezer Baptist Church, I would strongly recommend that we we'll spare time that you read that. We are so thankful and grateful that they thought enough to Brother Eugene to send that resolution. I don't know whether there are any theologians in the house. Make sure that I am in protocol. I'm going to I'm going to give a text. And I said I don't know whether any theologians you see if I don't give a text, they're gonna criticize me. So I'm gonna somebody shaking their head, they know what I'm talking about. I'm going to give a text. Let's uh let's show this musician some some love, give him a hand and clap for some. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 13, looking at verse number 22. The book of Proverbs, chapter 13, looking at verse number 22. It simply says this. A good man, a good woman, leaveth an inheritance to his children's children. Wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. 
Proverbs 27 and 1 says, Boast not thyself of tomorrow. I know it not what a day may bring forth. I want to share with you that I had to give a topic. I want to share from the on the topic, Lessons from Lorraine Williams, a good one. Lessons, lessons, lessons from Lorraine Williams, a good woman has died. We have, we have, we have come on this 23rd day of March, 2024, to celebrate the life of a good one. We are, we are, we are, we are told and there is proof and evidence of it. Beside every good man, there is a good woman. She has, she has lived and has done her best on this side for a total of 98 years. Psalms 90 and 10, Psalms 90 and 10 remind us that there are the days of our years are three score and ten. That's 70 years. God looked upon Sister, uh, Sister Williams with favor and gave her 98 years. That's 28 years over and above what the psalmist said in Proverbs that we are to have. Listen, 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 listen. At the, uh, at the end of this month, I have been on this earth for 72 years. I've been around long enough to to recognize a celebration when I see one. Uh, do me a favor, stand on your feet. I told you I'm a Southern Baptist preacher. Stand, stand on your feet and give the Lord a hand clap. Southern Baptist preacher. <laughs> if he or she feel that you're doing that, they'll they're shifting in low gear. <laughs> before I before I move forward, before I I move forward, let, let me let me make an attempt to to set the record straight. Con contrary, contrary to, to what you may have been told in the past, contrary to your to your past or your present belief, contrary to what uh, to what mama or what daddy may have told you, even contrary to what that what that old preacher may have told you. The funeral message, the words of comfort, the eulogy as it is so often called, is not a message unto the deceased. Oh, I got somebody that can help me. <laughs> it's a message, it's a message unto the living. Sister Williams, Sister Williams, Sister Williams, after 
after 98 good years has completed her, her earthly assignment and her, her earthly journey has come to an end. 98 years. But not so with us. God has, God has, God has allowed us to have just a few more moments. Maybe, maybe there is something that we just haven't gotten yet. He's allowed us the opportunity to, to get, you don't have to worry about, uh, about Sister Swinger. She has, she has lived her life. She has lived a good life. Can you, can you, can you honestly in your heart say that you have lived a good life? I said, a good woman, Eugene, not just any woman, but, uh, but a good woman has that. We, 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 we get news about goodness. Goodness, goodness, goodness has nothing to do with, with how long you hold church membership. Goodness, goodness, goodness has nothing to do with, with whether your name is on the plaque as you enter the vestibule of the local church. Goodness, goodness, goodness has nothing to do with, with how many positions you may have held in the church. Goodness has everything, everything to do with the condition of one's heart. That was weak. <laughs> my father, my father, the, my father, the late Reverend George Carey would, would always say to my to my mother, he called her baby. His wife, he called her baby. He would always say to her baby. There are some good folks in the church. She would respond sometimes by, uh, by saying, yes, but I just don't know what they're good for. <laughs> Later on, when she was in the kitchen preparing meals and I was in there, she would, she would reminisce what she just said. What they good for. Then she, then she would add something else on to it and she would say, they're good for nothing. <laughs> now, now, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, so, so in this, in this, in this, in this, in this, in this message today, I want to, uh, I want to try, I want to attempt to do several things. I want to share some words of encouragement and. Uh, so words to those of us who are who are still in the land of the living. Uh, let me remind you that you are uh, that you're not here because you've been so righteous. You, you're not here because you've been so holy. You're, you're not here because you've kept the faith. But you're still here today because of God's love, his, his mercy, and his amazing grace. Are we in church now? It is, it is, it is also, it is, uh, it is at this time, uh, uh, sister congresswoman, that, uh, that when we come together to celebrate life through death, oftentimes, oftentimes, members of the family and, and friends, they, uh, they would raise that question, what is what is death? What is, what is, what is, what is this, what is this power that all the time to uh, Brother Eugene seem to come from, come from out of nowhere? It, 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 
it, it disturbs the peace and the harmony and the serenity of our home. I oftentimes snatch it from us. Those who we love. Donnell, what is death? Let uh, me. Somebody trying to rush me. You don't need to do it. Let me, let me try to reduce it to its lowest common denominator. Death is, is merely a promise from God. God, God promised us, Eugene. God, God promised us, Eugene, that, that man shall live. But he said, at the appointed time, he shall die. But it doesn't end there. If he, if he lives in Christ, and if he died in Christ, the word says, since we shall live again. On the March the 12th, 2024, a good woman, a kind woman, a gentle woman, a humble woman, after, after 98 years, heard the call of her master, her appointment, her assignment on this side was over. Lessons, 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 lessons from. Sister Lorraine Payne Williams. Lesson number one, that she was here today. You, you read the eulogy. You, you heard the resolution. You, you knew her. Lesson number one. She would tell you that in, in everything that you do, no matter what the opposition were, no matter what the barriers were, no matter how difficult it was, no matter what folk tell you, she would tell you lesson number one to be persistent. Persistent means to 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 be firm, to to continue, to 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 don't let anything stop you. She she. She got her persistency from her parents. They raised her and they and they realized that she had she had some ability and some knowledge and some understanding that, that other children may not have had. And her parents understood the importance of education. That's where the seed was planted. Don't get mad, don't get upset, don't get bent out of shape, but, but I'm not sure we plant any seeds anymore. I ain't coming back to shower for you no <laughs> Her parents planted the seeds. Lorraine, if you don't do anything, be persistent. Focus on what you want in life. And move towards accomplishing that goal. They wanted her to have a good education, being persistent. So as a young age, can you imagine this? As a as a young age, at the age in fifth grade, sixth grade, taking your daughter out of your home, putting her with her, her aunt and her uncle. Because focus on her getting a better education. She started her persistency, and then she she hooked up with Eugene. <laughs> can you imagine? Can you imagine? Can you imagine what's going to happen when you got person number one? And Person number two, and both of them filled with persistency. Yeah. With the with the help of Eugene, they began to they began to see him. If they didn't need anybody to 
tell them they, they knew what they saw was not right. Folk, 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 folk in position, folk in authority, folk who claim they know, folk who got a whole lot of education. <laughs> see, see stuff that is that is not right, and make no attempt at all to do anything about it. So, so somebody will somebody will get mad, but I uh, but I look at bodies, Democrat and Republicans. How, how do you look at stuff and know that it is wrong and do absolutely nothing about it? <laughs> With Eugene, they had uh, they had uh, they had they had persistency. Both of them remind me of that, the words of that song that was recorded by the Godfather of Soul. Yeah, don't look at me like you don't know who the Godfather is. <laughs> Papa got a brand new bag. He love all that. Please, please. That, that, that's what I'm talking about. Eugene, Eugene, Eugene and Lorraine reminded me, me of the words of that song of the Godfather of Soul in her persistency. I don't want nobody give me nothing. Open up the door and I'll get it myself. <laughs> Sis Williams, Sis Williams, and uh, Sis Williams and Eugene never, 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 never bagged anybody for anything. They, they saw what they want and what they did was not for was not for Eugene and, and was not for Lorraine, but it was to make life better for somebody else. They were persistent. <laughs> Standing up, standing up in front, in front of a mean old governor of the state of Virginia, being persistent and said, you ain't going to convince me that I can't keep telling people about what's wrong and push it to do what is right. <laughs> well, I'm losing them, so I better move on. <laughs> Lesson number one. She, she can tell you about being persistent. Lesson number one, be persistent. The second lesson, just Lorraine will, will tell us and will, will help us stay focused. Did you hear what I said? Stay focused. No matter, no matter. No matter, no matter what Lorraine's mission in life was, no matter Eugene, no, no matter what what barriers got in their way, no matter no matter what lies may have been told on them, at the end at the end of the day, Lorraine and and, and brother Eugene, when they sit at the dinner table, they, they sat at each other. We got to remain focused. She kept her eyes on the prize. She saw it dangling there. She, she knew that it was there. And she knew if she lose focus. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. <laughs> Brother Eugene, I don't know how y'all do it. I don't know how how she did it. Stay focused on for not eighty years. Folk confused me so bad in the church, I, I can't stay for my son for 12 months. <laughs> but Lorraine 
pain was trouble. She, she knew what it was that, that her mission and her assignment in life was. She stayed focused. I ain't coming back to South here anymore. <laughs> so I've got to tell you this. I am of the opinion. This is America. I have a right to. To my opinion. I am of, I am of the opinion. That as a race of black folk. We have lost. Focus. Look at the But you don't want to. Let me put up. Let me put another spin on it. If if we haven't if we haven't lost focus, then we're focusing on something that, that Grandma said don't now to a hell of me. I don't want that here, but that's what Grandma said. <laughs> Can you can you imagine when when massive resistance? Can you can you imagine at the uh, at the height of the civil rights movement? The whole plan was to cause us to lose focus, put barriers in the way, put put obstacles in the way, change voting right laws, and did everything that could be done. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. In an effort to cause us to lose. I can imagine that as Sus Williams and, and Brother Williams, Eugene, I can imagine that, uh, that they lost a whole lot of friends. And some of the friends that they, that they lost, I'm just talking about what I'm talking about, a whole lot of the friends that they lost didn't have the same skin color that they had. But in the midst of everything, trying to raise two daughters, trying to maintain the household, trying to serve and make the community and the city better, you can't tell me that, that the average person did not have lost focus, but, but Eugene and his wife, Lorraine, remain focused. <laughs> you live in the city of Charlottesville, city of Peterborough, I don't care what city it is. If folk like them would have lost focus, stuff would be different. Well, y'all looking at me funny, so I better. <laughs> I better sit down. <laughs> My last and, and final point, I think. <laughs> Be persistent. That's what she would check. Don't tell me about the issues you got. Don't tell me about what problems you got. Don't tell me about what barriers you up against. She would tell you to be persistent. Stay focused. Whole lot of stuff will cause you to lose focus. Sometimes, sister, sister Congresswoman, we, we lose focus because of ourselves. Not anything around us. But grandma said, we, we just give it up. Her second point was to, to be focused. The final point, Brother Eugene, she would tell you, don't build a life sitting around yourself. But have a mission and a goal in life. Helping others along the way. Can I say that again? Yes. It wasn't. I told you on something about the preacher. It wasn't. It wasn't about her. It wasn't about Eugene. 
It, it was about what can we do to make life. It, it, if it just, if it just a teeny weeny, it's somebody else. We, we are, we are, we are so caught up in in ourselves that we don't have any any concern about those those around us. We have this crazy, foggy mentality. I, I got mine, so let them get theirs. That, that, that was that was not Sister Williams' plotting life. It was about Eugene. What can we do to make life better for somebody else? I'm just talking about you got it, what I'm talking about. <laughs> A whole lot of hope in, in the city of Charlottesville. Got no earthly idea who Lorraine Payne Williams was. Had no idea who brother Eugene Williams is. But they are reaping the benefits. Life is a little better for them. Because sister Williams and brother Williams believe we got to do something to help somebody else. It wasn't about getting our two daughters in a second. It was about getting them in so we can usher in other folks. I'm finished. <laughs> I heard what you said. <laughs> there was a there was a man who had two sons. Junior and Junior and Baby. Yeah, you, you, you got some big boys too. I, I know. <laughs> Junior was the oldest. He was a he was a piece of work. He stayed in trouble all the time. Big boy was a humble kid, well mannered, polite. Sister McCullum, the daddy would go to work every day. Friday, the eagle fly, you get paid, you know. <laughs> Take his paycheck every Friday. Come home, and there was a metal box sitting on top of the fireplace. Flip that metal box open and take his check and put it in the box. On Saturday morning, the bank's open a half a day, he would, he would get up and go to the bank, cash his check so he could. Provide for his two sons, Junior and, and Big Brother. The day that comes home one, I'm finished, comes home one Friday. <laughs> routine, he pops the box up and he put the check in and he flips it closed. He gets in the bed, it's Saturday morning now. Daddy is still sleeping. He normally gets up around 7.15, 7.30, but it's now 8.15, 8.30. So Baker goes in and he knocks on the door and he said, Daddy, you, you, you got to get to the bank. Daddy said, I'm, I'm old son. In the meantime, Junior, the trouble one, then flip the box. Got the check out. Going out the door with his friends. Big boy goes back to his daddy and he wakes him up again and said, Daddy, you, you got to get up. Junior then got your check. He's going to sign it. Going to get it cash. 
Spend all your money. Don't worry about it, son. You go on outside and play. Abel couldn't play. He, he knew what Junior was getting ready to do. He go back a third time. It's, it's about 10.30 now. Then he got to get up. Junior got to check. The daddy gets up and he said, Big brother, don't, don't worry about it. To the two daughters, Brother Williams, to the friend, to the community, don't worry about it. He said, Big brother, what you don't know, on two weeks ago, on the job, we went to direct deposit. <laughs> The money is already in the bank. I'm just, I'm just driving my car to the to the family members, to, to Eugene, to all other friends and community. Don't worry about Sister Lorraine paying wheels. Well, she had direct deposit. When she, when she closed her eyes, when she closed her eyes on the truck. Of March 2024, the only thing that is left in this box is some flesh and some bones. She had direct deposit, so her soul is in heaven with the Lord. Thank God for 98 years of good life. Do you have? Direct deposit. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. And the speed you shot off the enamel right now. Let's see. Let's see him, him this one, the son, share another hymn of comfort. I want to say this to you. I hope I have shared a word with those of us who have seen a living. Amen. You can look at the life, at the life of Sister Williams and also the brother. You can learn from that. We can do as Paul says. He's going to run to see what the end is going to be. But as a musician is coming, it's 98 years. Constantly trying to convince for to do the right thing. I, I, can't, I can't figure that out. You know what is right. But I got to spend a lifetime convincing you. Just do the right thing. You remember Spike Lee? Just do the right thing. You, Jay, you can't tell me I know better. You can't tell me you do. In the year that y'all spend together, you have to sit around the dinner table, wanting to complain. For who you thought were fighting turned out to be against you. For who, who told you that, that they had your back, and you and Sister Lorraine didn't show up in the meeting, they didn't even show up. I know you felt like the plane, but you realized that that was going to do absolutely no good. 98 years, I won't complain. Oh, I can't complain. 
But if I complain, you're going you to find out that I got some issues. Then you're going to really give me something to complain about. Come on, Sheriff. I'm thinking it's Sunday morning. Come on. I would ask an apology, but I don't. I don't apologize for the gospel of Jesus Christ.